Well, I talked this morning about uh, how the story of the universe is that information, which I call novelty, is struggling to free itself from habit, which I call entropy, and that this process, which informs the whole history of the universe on all scales, chemical, biological, cultural, etc., is, ex- is accelerating, speeding up. And it seems as if what wants to happen is the whole cosmos wants to change into information or put another way in a geometric model, all points want to become connected. The thing is achieved through connectivity. The path of complexity to its goals is through connecting things together. Well, if that's true, then you can imagine that there is an ultimate end state of that process. It's the moment when every point in the universe is connected to every other point in the universe. And if that's what the universe is trying to do to overcome its uh, dissipate state, its spread out state, and somehow function as a unitary monad, then uh, this this point does not lie too far ahead of us in time, given the acceleration rates of, of all these technical processes, So, at least locally. So on one level, I think there is a cultural singularity. A cultural, what I mean by that is a place in our cultural development where we can't predict or understand what will happen to us a kind of flip point, if you want, or doorway, if you want, or revelation, if you want. And uh, it's built in to the structure of space and time. It's that novelty in its emergence is now operating at such a fine scale that it's actually reflected in the lives of individual people. The human adventure has become the cutting edge uh, of cosmic destiny and but it won't always be so it will actually move through the human domain and into smaller and more rapid and compressed domains of concrescence and probably in our lifetimes and what will this mean or what will it look like it seems to me it's just not possible to say because we're too far away from it even though it's only 14 years in the future, if it's in 2012, those 14 years are going to be be so mutational, so transformational, that right now in time, we can't see around the corner. We're summoning strange helpers to our aid. The, The machines that we had such confidence in controlling are actually a kind of intellecty of some sort that is alive and with us in the historical continuum and evolving at a far faster rate than we are. And what all this leads to and how it works is very, very difficult to predict. And I'm not a paranoid. I don't see, I don't, I think it's very difficult to predict. I think we wished for transformation. Western civilization built it into its cultural agenda. Science delivered far more than we ever dreamed in terms of understanding of matter and energy and space and time. And now, under the aegis of market capitalism, where everything is in a state of furious competition, somebody is going to put something together that is just going to completely redefine and rewrite the nature of reality itself. And my bet is it will be some kind of a technology. It may, it could be a drug. It could be a machine. I, it would be nice to think that it might be a technique or a teaching. But just looking at the history of the human race, I'll bet you it's some kind of technology slash drug type thing that is just going to be plugged in to us and our consciousness and our aspirations, and it may already be here. It may be the internet. 
It may be nanotechnology. It may be、uh, biotechnology and cloning and quantum teleportation and、uh, virtual reality and all the rest of this. I mean, we are just at the brink of taking these various pieces of the god magician puzzle and putting them together and figuring out well, what can you do? What do you do if you can do anything? I mean that's really the question at the end of history. Once you have overcome all limitation, what is the human agenda? Yeah.、Uh, do you、uh, do you believe then that this is something that we're just we're observing, or we actually play a part in its development?、Uh, so, what is the purpose of these hallucinogenic exper- experiences? Is it to get information so we can influence the outcome, or we just are we just watching? No, I think we're more than watching. I think we are. We spin it. We're the spin doctors of the thing. In other words, if there is a prophecy which must be fulfilled, it's a kind of general prophecy, something like, "And man shall become dirigible in the last decades of the or the first decade of the third millennium." It's general. In other words, what does that mean? Man becomes dirigible. We turn into airships. We become oblate spheroids. We what? 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 What does it mean? Well, that's open to human definition through specific acts of creation.、Uh, the levels of novelty or habit in any given moment will be fulfilled, but how they're fulfilled is a matter of human decision. An example, which maybe makes this clearer, is from statistics. For example, we know that in the next 12 months, between eight and 11 people will jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. But who those people will be is surely not decided today. They have the right, through the experiences they meet along the way, to either include or disinclude themselves in that.、Uh, Group of of、uh, victims. So, in that same way, I think the future, the the details are ours to fabricate. The great landscape over which the city of time will be built is given by natural law, and where we are in time is very near this attractor. How and then people sometimes object to this and say, "Well, don't you think it's weird, a weird coincidence that we happen to be so near the attractor when presumably it could have been throughout time?" Well, no, I don't think it's weird. I think our the strangeness of our condition signifies the nearness of the attractor. That the reason our world is so accelerated, the reason all effects are being smeared toward Omega, is because of the nearby presence of this cultural black hole, this singularity of technology and biological intent that is feeding backwards into time these apocalyptic images. And I, you know, would predict that. Between now and 2012, there will be ever more hysteria, prophecy, prediction, revelation, squirrely teachings, people bawling out their strange despair on every street corner,、uh, because in the collective unconscious of which each of us shares a part, the thing at the end of time is spinning. Like a club ornament, like a Christmas tree ball, like a bar ornament, and it's throwing off scintillations, which are distorted images of itself. The transcendental object at the end of time infects the history that precedes it with the sh- with the images of its un- approaching unfoldment. This is what I mean when I say history is the shock wave of eschatology. The presence of history. On this planet means that this thing is moving beneath the surface. This protean form that, when it manifests, 
It will shed the institutions of history the way a butterfly sheds a chrysalis when it breaks out of its metamorphosis. But the, the period of latency, the period inside the shell for this metamorphosing super creature is the 25,000 year season that we call human history. The fact that it's the same period of time as the precession of the equinoxes, I don't know, don't ask me. Fortune or coincidence, uh, yeah.